Guys, I'm excited for this Walk Wednesday. I hope you are too. It is time for Walk Wednesday and we're doing a Chasil Chan bow, which is a baked Chasil bow. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click ding, the notification bell. Here's how you make the dough for your chassis or bao. And it's actually a really versatile dough that can be used for all different things like pineapple buns, chassis baos, frankfurter buns, spam buns, all different types of buns. Anyway, follow the process. So I'm using a, an electric mixer for this. You can knead this, but it'll take a lot longer to knead. So we're gonna go, first of all, nice and slow on the electric mixer with the following ingredients. We've got some strong bread flour, sugar, yeast, a little bit of salt and some butter or margarine. So get that butter mixing in with the flour and all the other ingredients on a slow but steady speed. If you're struggling with the mixer to get that butter sort of melted in and sort of sifted in into sort of breadcrumbs, then you want to get your hands in and just lightly use the fingertips or sort of rub through it to get that butter and flour and sugar mixed together well. Make sure your warm water is warm to the touch, not just lukewarm, so slightly on the hotter side of warm. And also weigh it out by the gram and then add it in half of the water first and then gradually add the rest. Lastly, once all the water's in and all the flour is collected up by the bowl, then whack it up to high speed and give it a real knead. Once it's done, give it a good knead, just shape it into a nice ball and then cover it in a bowl with a clean, damp, tea towel. So whilst the bread is resting, you've got plenty of time to make your chasil. And I'm going for a classic Hong Kong style chasil here. I mean, my mum makes a great chasil, but I kind of find this recipe works better for a chasil bao. So slightly different to mum's recipe. But we start similarly with some roughly chopped ginger and garlic. And actually, Leftover chassis will work perfectly for this because you want it cool enough before you stuff it into your bread. I've got two lovely sort of lengths of pork shoulder over here. Pork shoulder, neck, or even belly is good, but I, my preference is pork shoulder or neck. Garlic, finely chopped. straight in as well. And then it's just a matter of compiling all the sauces. Really quite simple. I've got a pinch of five spice, some white pepper, tomato paste for the color. And classically, in Chinese restaurants, they'd use, a lot of them use red food coloring and you get that sort of real, sort of thick red line around it. But tomato paste works fine. Got some honey here. Four tablespoons of honey, same amount of hoisin sauce. Really very, very simple. A couple of tablespoons of Shaoxing rice wine, and then two tablespoons of light soy for the saltiness. A couple of teaspoons of dark soy, and that will work with the tomato paste to really bring out that sort of deep red color. The longer you marinate this, the more sort of deep the color will be. And then some sesame oil. Give that a good massage through. Make sure all that meat gets that mixed sauce rubbed around it. it smells amazing already. Haven't even started cooking it yet. And you will struggle to not eat this all before you then chop it up and put it into the freshly made dough. But it is worth it. Just make sure you get all that ginger and garlic and the sauce over the top. I've got my oven on 150 degrees C. I'm gonna whack it in for about an hour and a half. So the chassis has got a really lovely char after an hour and a half of cooking. And you can see at that sort of low temperature, it kind of all falls apart, which is great for filling a chassis bow. You just wanna chop this up. Into small sort of dices. And then we're gonna pop that straight back into the sauce and get all that caramelized sauce off the bottom of the tray. 
And ideally you want this to be cool before we put this into the bread dough for baking. I'm going to wrap the chopped char siu up in all that sticky sauce. So that'll make a few char siu bows enough for me to show you. So my dough is looking beautiful there. Look, that's doubled in size, really nice and airy and light. I'll sort of turn it over for you guys to see how airy it is there. And this is sort of our knocking back time and starting to shape and it was lose the air at this point and then we'll leave it for another half an hour once I've shaped it with the filling inside. So I'm going to cut into this first and then knock each piece back whilst I'm working it out. I'm going to go for six good size baked chassis bow here. So the only best way to do that is just roll it into a rough cylinder before cutting it. And then, much like making dim sum or a steamed bao, we're gonna go for the classic school of rock, pinchy, pinchy, twisty, twisty. So push in, pinch and twist, push in with your thumb, pinch and twist it back together. And I'm gonna do that to create a nice, so skin around, the outside of the dough. Really, really squeeze that together now. And that is my sort of knockback on the dough. Just squeeze that together so it stays in one piece. Do that again with the rest of your dough. You're gonna do this part first before we start filling your dough at all. And once you've made your circles of dough for each chassis bow, and you want to turn it upside down, flatten it, and then just roll into it and turn it around slightly each time. It's a bit rough and ready in the middle, that's fine there. But you can see I'm going to get a good size chassis bow here, proper sort of bakery snack size or lunch almost. Roll all your bits of dough out. You want a thick enough bit of bread, but a good size circle. Once you've got these nice sort of rough pancakes of dough, then you're gonna get a good tablespoon of your filling, possibly a little bit more, into there, nice and generous. And then we're gonna keep my thumb at the top of it and then just pinch upwards on the sides of the dough. Once you've got enough of an edge, then you can just Start to pinch all of that together, keeping this dirty thumb out of the way. And then just really, really squeeze that together so that the bread closes up nicely all the way around what will become the bottom of the dough. And you can see there, there's no sort of gaps. Turn that upside down, let it sit and then onto a tray, a baking tray, some greaseproof paper. So my six chassis bao are ready to sit, rest for another 30 minutes before I bake them. I'll brush them with a bit of egg wash before baking them as well. Oven's on at 180 degrees C. That one looks like it's probably gonna burst, but hey, I'll eat that one. Now, because I've only got a flat tray here, I'm gonna cover this in cling film. Let it sit for half an hour. Perfect, so my chassis bow have risen nicely and they'll rise again whilst they're actually baking. So you just have to egg wash them before they go in. I've got the oven on preheated at 180 degrees C. And that one is definitely gonna burst. Straight in the oven, about 15 to 20 minutes. Check it after 15 minutes. You want it golden brown. Look at these guys. 18 minutes it took in the oven, and actually the one that I thought was gonna burst didn't burst at all, so we're lucky. They're looking great, nice and fluffy, but that got that great glaze inside. You can see how soft it is. I'll break one open, oh, still steaming hot inside, and a good amount of chassis inside as well, which is great. Mm. It's like heaven in a bun. 
Wow. That is so good. You jealous, Steve? I am, yeah. <laughs> this is, I guess, a whole lot of love. You have to take the time, allow it to rise, do all that knocking back, shaping. But it's so worth it. Guys, if you like me and you love your food, don't forget to subscribe to our School of Walk channel, like all our social media, and ding! Click the notification bell. <laughs>